Matt Hall of K-State Online here with Derek Young outside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. After another K-State post-practice media session, we talked to offensive coordinator Courtney Messingham and three players. Coach Messingham mentioned Jaron Lewis, a true freshman, in the backup quarterback conversation today. There's days that we walk off the field saying, boy, I think one's starting to separate. And then a day later, you say it's still a, it's still a horse race between three guys. Um, as an example, Jaron uh, Lewis started getting a few more reps on, on one of our ends of double rep. And, and he, he saw, saw major improvement as that happened. Um, and I think the biggest thing that they all have to understand is it's out of their control who the second string guy is. It is in their control how well they perform. And then that's what's going to make us say, yep, that's the guy that I think can lead us if we need him to. So, of course, Derek Coach Messingham does mention Jaron Lewis. Still sounds like it's really a battle between Nick Austin and John Holcomb. What are your thoughts right now on the backup quarterback position at K-State? Yeah, it's definitely still between John Holcomb and Nick Austin. But Jaron Lewis has at least done enough to warrant some repetitions within the battle. So I think it's not necessarily, hey, Jaron Lewis is competing for the second quarterback spot, but it's, hey, Jaron Lewis has made enough growth at this point to at least get some meaningful reps uh, during some meaningful uh, practice time at right. that point. What are one or two other things today maybe that Coach Messingham said that stood out to you? Uh, despite being a little banged up at the fullback position, they don't have a whole lot of concern or worry right now because they feel comfortable and they know that within their offense, they're going to have to use tight ends at that spot because of all the shifts and motions. Those two positions interchange quite a bit and you have to learn quite a bit of the other one. So they're not afraid, I guess, is a good way to put it, of putting Nick Lenners or yeah. Blaze Game in there. Maybe it leaves you a little thin at tight end, but they think they have enough bodies to, you know, fulfill both of those rules. Courtney Messingham's quarterback will be junior Skylar Thompson. Skylar was available today for the media. One thing he talked about was a chance this year to throw receivers open more often. Yeah, I think that's the, the biggest step that I've made um, this year from spring and until now is just instead of just throwing to my guys, just throwing the spots on the field and letting them go and, go and get the ball. And I think that's that's escalated my play a lot. And, and, and my receivers, trust me, they know that uh, I'm going to get the, the ball to where it needs to be and that they just got to fill and run through that window, you know, and, um, you know, we have hiccups here and there of, you know, maybe, you know, if they're running like a dig route, you know, if they settle in one window too short and I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing one more window over, you know, it's just a communication thing of getting on the same page and we've done a great job of that so far and we just got to continue to get better. So that's a skill we expect to see this season used by Skylar Thompson. Derek, what are some other things you like about Skylar's game that either you heard him say today or in general you think he can do in this offense? He's just advancing his development as a quarterback probably handcuffed to an extent of what he could do within the last offense and he feels like he has a little bit more leash to uh, unleash so to right. speak uh, in terms of the new offense uh, not only is he looking at this and that he's starting to get more advanced in terms of learning where the offense alignment should be or where his running back is going to be and be able to make a check based on a, a horde of different coverages and a horde of different blitzes so it's not as uh, elementary of thinking as he was maybe a year or two ago and now he's definitely graduated to that next level of thinking and learning and it's really he thinks will propel the offense forward. There's obviously a battle behind Skylar Thompson at the number two quarterback spot. There is a running back behind Skylar Thompson, too. James Gilbert was praised today for knowing the offense as well as the coach. Here's what he said about that quote from Courtney Messingham. I feel like transitioning from the spring to the summertime, um, we had a lot, of, a lot of player run practices, so I feel like I dug deep into the playbook and understood like, the concepts, what are we trying to do, and the why behind why am I running this route, why am I running this way. So I really like got comfortable with the offense. Now I know what's going on. Derek, this running back battle is not going to be over anytime soon. A number of guys fighting for carries there. What did you hear today? What's interesting about that position to you right now? What's interesting to me is, uh, aside from maybe not having the star power as an Alex Barnes that they did a year ago, that as a whole, they might feel just as comfortable with this running back group as they did last year, at least you know the players and, and some of the people that have been around. They're not really concerned about the depth and I think they really love the freshman class I mean Joe Irvin has been mentioned uh, quite a bit recently as uh, a freshman really making some noise on yep. uh, and uh, with some really good repetitions and he was again today specifically by starting quarterback Skylar Thompson so I think that even though it seemed doom and gloom at running back uh, as early as recent as December I think now it's almost developed into a point where because they feel like they have the depth and the rotations where they want, even though it's probably going to be a battle throughout the season, I can see different starters throughout the year. I think that it's almost developed into one of their strengths. Last but not least, excuse me, we had senior offensive lineman Tyler Mitchell. I asked him what the biggest difference was between offensive line coach Connor Riley and Charlie Dickey last year. Here's what he had to say. I'd say Coach Riley has us, has us focus more on uh, different uh, coverages to 
to look at so we know you know who's the who's the final lever yeah. who's gonna who's gonna come free on stuff i think i think that's one big departure which like that's that's not bad on coach uh, uh dicky spar it's just he's you know he's he's trying to get us to to look at like the stacks and stuff and and just you know uh, uh see that and then i mean from from uh, that look you can you can see who all is going to blitz and stuff right. so i think just you know trying to look at different coverages is like the biggest deal derek let's finish up talking about the offensive line of course we hear all the time they want to get to six seven eight guys have some depth just give me your overall thoughts on that position right now roughly two three weeks heading into the start of the season I feel like they think that they're still trying to probably figure out who's going to be number six, number seven, and number eight, so to speak. But I think that they feel like they're close enough now that they might have those answers by at least the, the season opener. So a little bit of optimism kind of bleeding through when you, when you talk to uh, the coaches and the players about the position. And, and when it comes to the starting five, I think there's probably still one starting spot available and it might be at left guard. Uh, and you can probably read more about that on our site. So right. become a member. And at the, at, at the same time, I think that they're comfortable with what they have and they just want a little bit more. But I think, you know, common nature with coaches, they always want a little bit more. That's going to wrap us up from outside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Derek did motivate me, though, to remind you, you can subscribe to Case State Online right now. Get 25% off a new annual subscription and a $75 free Adidas gift card. Or subscribe to our YouTube page. There's a red button around here somewhere. Hit click on it. Uh, give Derek your praise. So for Derek Young, Grant Flanders running all this, I'm Matt Hall. Thanks for watching, and please tell your friends.